happy about it. And he's a freshman, and I think he's just happy to be in a uniform out here today and be a part of the whole thing. He will be handling the kickoffs. Rich Miller will handle the place kicking and also the uh, punting duties. Miller was an all-league punter a year ago. And Coleman is going to tee it up pretty close to the near hash mark. It's going to be green back on the uh, near side and Potee on the far side. They're standing at about the two-yard line. Coach Tom Gadd said Coleman needs to work a little more on his hang time. He wants him to get it between the goal line and the five with better hang time as opposed to kicking in the end zone low. It's pretty good hang time here. High end over end kick. It'll be taken on the eight by Green. Green will come across the 15 to the 20, out to about the 24-yard line where he will be tackled on the play by Brian Davis, a reserve linebacker for the Bison. As we take a look at the starting lineup, it'll be Rob Burns opening at quarterback for uh, Southern Connecticut. Scott Rowe, a senior uh, co-captain, will be the fullback. Ellis Robinson will be the tailback. The wide receivers, Phil Plummer and Chris Ortiz. Ortiz is the go-to guy, and the tight end is Jim Duhame. First and 10 for Southern Connecticut. The ball on the 24-yard line near hash mark. They'll open an offset eye. Wide receiver Ortiz to the left. And actually, Siggy Traverso gets the call wide out to the right side. Bucknell in a five-man front. Burns will hand it to Robinson. And Robinson will get two yards out to the 26-yard line before the hole closed down pretty quickly. Tom Madigan, Jamie Grosbeck, Brandon Wren, Scott Robinson, and Joe Andruzzi will be left to right across the offensive line. And, Brian, that's a pretty big offensive line, a very veteran one as well. Well, they have a lot of experience. There's a lot of seniors in that group right there, and they're all big. I mean, they're all over 265 pounds, and they have some experience. Uh, Bucknell uh, coming at him with a basic 32 defense, 34 defense, and uh, sometimes they'll sink the ends inside. And it'll look like almost a four-man front. Second down now and eight. Backs are split now behind Burns. Burns calling out the signals. Burns will hand it off straight up to the middle, and that's the backup fullback Ian Paxson, and Paxson will be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Bison with good defensive surge. Ed Berman opens a defensive tackle with Hunter Adams. Andy DeRemus gets the call at nose guard. The linebackers, Rob Bird, Wally Hurdley on the inside. Josh Lebrecht and Willie Hill will be on the outside. The corners, Willie Jackson and Charles Crudup, Jack Boyle, and Mark Miller will be the safeties. Bob, the uh, Bucknell defense is not very large, but they're very active and they're very quick. You'll see a lot of stunning out of them today. And I think that they're going to try and take uh, the pressure to the Owls of Southern Connecticut here. Third down and seven. First third down conversion of the day for the Owls. Backs are split. Burns on a straight drop. Has time. Throws it long left side. Under throws Ortiz at the 40-yard line, and it's nearly intercepted by the cornerback, Willie Jackson, who turned around but couldn't get his paws on the ball. It wasn't a very experienced throw by an experienced guy, Rob Burns, there. He had a great pocket, plenty of time to throw the ball. One receiver surrounded by three defenders right there. That ball should have been picked off. It could have been an easy seven points to start this ball game. On to punt will be Frank Biancamano on fourth and seven. Back in single safety is John Sikowski. He'll stand just outside his own 35-yard line. Ten men at the line for the Bison. We'll see if they rush Biancamano. Last season, Biancamano averaged 36 yard a kick. Good pass from center. Low kick, tumbling kick. Sikowski will run up, field it on the 43. Come across the 45 to the right side of the 50. He'll get to the 48 of Southern Connecticut. Bucknell will start at an excellent field position. First and ten in Southern Connecticut territory. Fran Bouvois on the tackle for the out. Well, Bucknell gets the ball in Southern Connecticut territory here at the 49-yard line. It's almost like uh, when you get the ball in this position, like you're going downhill. Uh, you get a tremendous amount of momentum. You can see the goal line from a short distance away here. Let's see what they can do with this field position. No score, 13-20 to go in the first quarter. Bucknell on their first possession, 31-yard punt that time for Bianca Mano. Backs are in an eye, Bombic in front of Lemon. Fox the quarterback. He'll go back to pass. Going long. It's batted down at the line. It's tipped and knocked down. At the line, it was Ray Lallier, the defensive end, that got his hand up in the passing lane and knocked the pass down. A couple of tall guys. Fox the quarterback at 6'5". Lallier also goes 6'5". A couple of tall guys knocking the ball away from each other. Well, you don't expect a quarterback who's 6'5 to get balls batted down very often, so that's a little bit unusual. Uh, plenty of separation between the linemen, too. There was nobody in his face. I think he just had a low trajectory. Again, Fox the quarterback, Bombich the fullback, Lemon the tailback. No nope, boom to the left, Sikowski to the right. Lemon will carry. He'll be very close to the two yards he needs for the record. He got a little bit going over the left side following left guard Jason Donkers and left tackle Brian Gay. One would expect if Bucknell needs a couple of yards, they'll go behind their seniors to the left side. Eric DiDominicus starts at center, Scott Lennox at right guard, and Marius Misiak at right tackle. The... Uh, 
Defense for Southern Connecticut, a 4-3. Vladimir Jean Marie, the only starter returning for them. Paul Willis, Nate Main, and Ray Lallier, the others up front in the 4-3. It's third and nine, only one yard for Lemon on first down, uh, excuse me, on second down. The backs are split, receivers to the right and left. Fox back to pass, throws it underneath. Lemon makes the catch at the 45, comes inside the 45 to the 42, and now Bucknell will have a decision. It'll be fourth down and three, obviously too long for a field goal, a long 50-yard field goal. It appears they're going to send the punting team, try to play the field position game and knock them back inside the 10-yard line. Bob, it's a game of field position. It's too early to take any risk at this point. You don't need to give Southern Connecticut uh, any field position at this point. Back them up maybe inside the 15 here. Quarterback Jim Fox is out to take this punt. He may be Bucknell's short punter. Last year, quarterback Travis Kopp, the backup quarterback, was Bucknell's pooch punter. So it will be Fox punting instead of Miller. Maybe they'll try a fake on fourth and three. Fox will get the punt or the snap, and now he'll punt it. It's a low tumbling kick. Taking it will be Caporali at the 10. He'll come up to the 15. The first man to get to him for the Bison was Willie Hill, and Southern Connecticut will start their second possession, first and 10 from the 15-yard line. 32 yards on the kick, very short return. Well, one of the difficulties, I guess, with having your quarterback back there for the short punts is that somebody usually goes after the quarterback, and Fran Beauvoir of Southern Connecticut did upend Mr. Fox there. Uh, I don't think he was too thrilled about that. So Southern Connecticut will start their second possession. Again, as we mentioned at the 15, neither team had a first down. The defenses have come out stingy, at least in the opening moments. First and 10 for the Owls. They'll shuttle things around, move the tight end, Duhame, from the left side to the right side. Backs are in an offset eye, shaded to the right. Burns will play fake to Robinson. No, he'll give it off to Robinson. He'll come across the 15 to about the 16-yard line on the tackle, Michael Haggerty. And you hear the foghorn in the background. That's his dad that runs the foghorn, so he signals it for the first time on his son's first tackle of the season. And it was a good tackle because I think Robinson had a little bit of room there as there was a nice hole open up on the right side, but it was quickly shut down. That's just a pursuit play right there, Bob, where uh, he, you know, Haggerty has a chance to run, and that's the play he has to make. No score, 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Second down and a long eight to go for a first down for Southern Connecticut. They're going to put the fullback up on a wing, and the lone back is Robinson. He'll get a toss to the right side, the short side. He'll move the ball from the 16, maybe to the 17, to the 18 at best. Hunter Adams, the first man to get to him for the Bison. Also there, the outside linebacker, Willie Hill. And once again, Southern Connecticut with a very long third down play. It'll be third and seven coming up for the Owls. I think that last play, Bob, really kind of identified what type of defense Bucknell's going to have. That was a, a quick toss to Robinson, who has a lot of speed. They had eight guys in on that tackle, so the guys can run on the Bucknell defense. Dave Kotalski's team wants to be very quick in pursuing the ball. Third down and seven for Bucknell. They have a five-man front. Backs are split. Burns back to pass on third and long. Throws it underneath over the middle, intending it for Traverso. He makes the sliding catch at the 27-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about seven or eight, and it'll be good enough to move the sticks. He threw the ball low, had some pressure, and Traverso made a nice catch. It was a nice catch. It almost looked like it was a trap from here, but... Without the luxury of diamond vision, we're not going to see a replay of that. <laughs> what? Bucknell doesn't have diamond vision, so we put it on a list of things to get? You've got to get to the game here live. Going to the left side is Ortiz. It's the first first down of the game for either team. To the right side, it's Traverso. Lowe and Robinson back split behind Burns. Bucknell and again in a five-man front. Over the ball at center is Brandon Wren, a junior. Bucknell's going to blitz a couple of linebackers. They hand it off to Robinson, and Robinson will get nothing. In fact, he'll lose two back to the 25. The linebackers shooting the gap. Michael Haggerty, Rob Bird were there. Also, Hunter Adams, a defensive lineman, got up from the bottom of the pile. We've been mentioning Michael Haggerty. It appears that Wally Hurdley a little shaken up. Hopefully, he'll be able to get back in there for Bucknell. Uh, Rob Bird just picked his spot there and timed that snap count perfectly. He was in the backfield as the quarterback took the snap and really dis disrupted the entire play, created a lot of chaos in the backfield. Second down and 11 after the one-yard loss back to the 26. 9.37 to go in the first quarter. Again, no score. Backs in an offset eye. The tight end on the right side. Receiver to the right and to the left for Southern Connecticut. Burns play fakes. Back to pass. Has time. Throws it over the middle. Making the catch is Plummer. Caught it on the left hash. Crossed into the middle. Mark Miller makes the tackle. It'll be a pickup of 14 to the 40-yard line. And the sticks will move the second first down on the drive for Southern Connecticut. That was a very experienced throw there. It was play action pass. And uh, Burns looked off to the right most of the play and then came back over to Plummer on a slant pattern to the other side. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage there and just had inside position. Well-thrown ball, good catch, first down. First and 10, Southern Connecticut. They move it out to the 40-yard line, their own. The lone back now is Robinson as Rowe moves up on a wing, and he'll go in motion from right to left. Traverso to the right, Ortiz to the left. 
Burns this time will hand it to Robinson following some blocks around the left side. They get around Hill across the 45. Willie Jackson will knock him out of bounds at the 50, and I guess they're going to say he was on the white. And 15 more yards will go to the Southern Connecticut cause. They'll have a first down or very close at the 50. The late hit penalty against Jackson will move it down to the Bucknell 35. Willie Jackson put a big time hit right there on Ellis Robinson. Hello. Welcome to college football, but unfortunately out of bounds on the play. Ellis Johnson showed some speed there, being able to turn the corner. Couple and uh, yeah, very, very effective. A couple of notes about Willie Jackson, who started eight games a year ago. The 5'8 junior only weighs 163. He bench presses 325 and uh, obviously looks like he can pump some uh, wallop in there when he knocks you down on the sidelines. Well, one thing about uh, football you got to understand is the players come in all shapes and sizes. He's a little guy, but he packs a big wallop. And when you get a, a running start like he had right there and you explode with the shoulder in a rib cage, usually the guy gets upended. First and 10 for Southern Connecticut after the penalty. They'll actually move the ball just inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line because they'll rule that uh, Robinson was out of bounds, shy of midfield. 8.55 to go in the quarter, no score. Burns back to pass, throwing it short out of the backfield on the right side. It's tipped in the air and intercepted. Willie Hill intercepts. It may have hit Rowe, the fullback, on the back of the helmet. And the ball popped straight in the air, and Hill does a nice job getting the first turnover of the game for the Bison. It was a well-conceived play there, throwing a flare to Rowe out in the flat here, and he just seemed very slow in turning around for the ball. The ball hit him in the helmet before he could get his hands on it, popped it up, and we got a first interception, first turnover of the game. And Bucknell will start it at their own 39-yard line on the Hill interception. Willie Hill, a sophomore out of Vineland, New Jersey, had an appendicitis last year, didn't play much, and uh, coach is very high on him. Bucknell's second drive is going to start with a run to Lemon. Lemon will get around the corner. He'll get his three yards that he needs for the record. And Rich Lemon, in the first game of his junior season, becomes Bucknell's all-time leading rusher. He now has 2,650 yards. That breaks Brian Hennessy's record. And uh, what a player this Rich Lemon is, uh, Brian Baldinger, because sometimes he'll get those little gains, those little gains, and the next thing you know, he'll go for 70 yards. Well, you know, uh, one thing you... In football, you never script the big plays. The big plays just happen because you got big time players. He just turned a play that had nothing, no chance to gain any yards, and picked up three right there. Second down and seven to go for Bucknell. Lemon, the lone back, twin set to the right side. Lemon will carry the short side, the left side, try to get around the end, give a stiff arm, giving it to Gomez, and then finally finishing him off as the middle linebacker. J.R. Ferguson, but still about four more yards for Lemon and Bucknell now with a very workable third down and about a yard and a half to go for a first down. Lemon made the right read there, Bob. Southern Connecticut right now is really stacking the middle of the defense and challenging Lemon to go outside, but they don't really have much support out there, and twice now he's able to turn the corner. Third down and a yard and a half. Bucknell will see if they bring some extra tight ends in. They're going to use Ron Rocket as a wing back. They'll go with double tight ends. Back split behind Fox. Everybody jammed up around the line. It's a fullback Jeff Bombich. Breaks the original tackler. Gets the first down. Gets across midfield all the way to the 46. A seven-yard run for the walk-on fullback who didn't play last year as a freshman. Came out when Tom Gadd took over in the spring and has worked his way into the top spot at fullback, especially with Bob Horst out with a concussion. He's going to have to play quite a few minutes. Bombich right there just got stopped at the line of scrimmage. Probably had enough for the first down in the first yard, but just got six yards on extra effort as he was able to bounce the ball, uh, bounce the run out to the outside. First and 10, Bucknell on the 46 of Southern Connecticut. 7.43 and counting to go in the quarter. No score. Backs in an eye. Now no boom from the right side. Comes in motion to the left. They'll go to Bombich again. Bombich will try to follow the right side. He may get a yard to the 45 that time. Southern Connecticut closed that hole down very, very quickly. We'll call it second down and nine coming up for Bucknell. The uh, right side of the defensive line made the stop for the Owls. The defense of uh, Southern Connecticut right now is doing a lot of stemming at the line of scrimmage. By that... They're lining up in one position and then shifting one or two seconds later, trying to confuse the offensive line of Bucknell right now. But Bucknell, to their credit, looks like they're handling all the shifts. Forward progress gave Bombich two yards, so it's second and eight now from the 44 of Southern Connecticut. Lemon the lone back, twin set to the left side. Lemon will carry, go around left tackle. Lemon inside the 40 to the 38. Lemon will quickly pick up another five, six yards, and once again, Bucknell will have a third and short. We'll call it third and three coming up for Jim Fox. It looks like it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup out there between the middle linebacker J.R. Ferguson and Bob Lemon as, as uh, Lemon continues to bounce the ball to the outside to daylight, and Ferguson's there to meet him, unfortunately, for Southern Connecticut, they're giving up five or six yards per play right now. And if you get five or six yards of play, you can walk down the field. It might take you a while, but you're going to get down there. They're six and a half to go. 
No score in the first quarter. Lemon the lone back. Twin set to the right as the ball is on the left hash. Six-man line for Southern Connecticut. There is movement, and I think Southern Connecticut's defensive line may have made contact. It may have been Dennis Bobby, the man that jumped across the line, and Bucknell's going to get a free first down on the penalty. They had third and about two. Five yards gives them a first down, and they'll be inside the 35-yard line. It's nice when they give you the easy ones like that, and you're able to start all over on first down now. Is there, is there talk down there in the offensive line, Brian? Are you, are you encouraging the guy to come across the offensive well, line? Well, you're not really uh, talking to him like that, but uh, a good quarterback's count uh, can draw a defense lineman all sides. And right now, they look real jumpy at the defensive front right now. They're cocking the nose tackle. He's going from weak side to strong side a lot, and he's just a little jumpy. First and ten, Bucknell. The lone back is Lemon. He'll carry it straight up the middle. Good line surge. Gets across the 30, across the 25 to about the 23. Very close to another Bucknell first down. Lemon will have about 26 yards on the game. That time he picked up nine on first down. And now we have a quarterback's delight. Second down at about a half yard. You can go for the end zone or do whatever you want this right here. This is a here. free play right here. And if you want to go for it right now, it's a good opportunity to do it. You know that you are uh, got the first down within reach on third down if, you, if, you, if this play is incomplete. So... This is really an offensive coordinator's uh, creativity play. Second down and a half yard to go. No boom to the right. Sikowski to the left. Lemon the lone back. Cal Wilcox the tight end right side. They're going to play it safe. Run it to Lemon. Inside the 25. To the sideline. To the 20. To the 15. Lowers his shoulder and gets to the 13. And I guess that can be a big play when you toss it to Rich Lemon. Picks up the better part of 10, 12 yards again. And the sticks will move. And the Bison on their best drive of the day so far. I tell you what, Bob, I was out in practice two weeks ago, and this kid looked like uh, he was really ailing. Uh, he couldn't get through the day's practice that day. The Achilles was really hurting him. I don't see any favoring of the leg right now. He looks really, really sharp. First and 10 for Bucknell. The ball just short of the Southern Connecticut 13. Sikowski and Milkboom wide to the right. Lemon again the lone back. The tight end on the left side. Fox on a long count. Six man front. Lemon will run to the short side. Get inside the 10. Inside the 5. He'll be knocked out of bounds by Julio Gomez down at the 3. Very close to another first down and Lemon continues to pile up the yardage. He is rushed now for almost 46 yards in this first quarter. you got to really give credit to the left side of the offensive line right here. Miziak and Donkers doing a very good job uh, uh, Gay and, uh, and Donkers right now doing a very good job on the left side controlling the corner and allowing Lemon to bounce outside. That time he met J.R. Ferguson at about the 10, ran over him, and ended up down at the three-yard line. Second and inches from the three. They did not give him the first down. The backs are now in an eye. They're going to toss to Lemon again. Lemon this time will be met in the backfield by Gomez, and he'll lose three yards back to the six. And now Bucknell will be staring at a third down and three from the six. That was a costly play. Lemon's asking to be taken out right here. I think he's a little tired. Maybe it's an equipment problem, but that's a costly play because now they're back at the seven-yard line on a third down. If they don't make the touchdown, they're going to have to kick the field goal, and that'd be uh, hard to settle for right now because they've had an excellent drive thus far. Four minutes and 48 seconds and counting to go in the quarter. Bucknell on their second possession. They took over in their own territory, on their own 39 after the Willie Hill interception. Third down and four to go for a first down. Backs are split, Milton Moore in at tailback. He'll go into the pattern. Fox looking for Moore, throws to him in the end zone, and the backup tailback on his first play from scrimmage scores the touchdown on the pass from Jim Fox, and it's Bucknell six, Southern Connecticut nothing with 4.33 to go in the first quarter. Well, I think you gotta give credit to uh, Richie Lemon for taking himself out of the game on that play because Milton Moore really found a nice soft spot in the zone and uh, nice pitch and catch between Fox and Moore. Easy six points. On for the extra point is Rich Miller for Bucknell. Miller with 31 out of 33 on the extra points a year ago. Nice snap, nice hold by Sikowski. The kick is up and the kick is good. We've got a break in the action with a score. Bucknell seven, Southern Connecticut nothing. You're listening to Bucknell football on the Bison Sports Network. The good news for Bucknell, they score on a seven-yard touchdown pass from Jim Fox to Milton Moore. Coleman will kick off, and he's going to kick it to about the six-yard line. It will be taken by George Green up the middle to the 15 to the 20, out across the 20 to about the 23-yard line, and that's where Southern Connecticut will set up shop. The uh, Bison will have one bad news, and that being that Willie Hill, excuse me, not Willie Hill, but Wally Hurdley is out, maybe lost for quite a few games with a torn ACL. Brought down by number 43, Brian Davis. Bob Beeler and Brian Balding are here as Southern Connecticut will have the ball at their own 24-yard line, first down and 10 
And we're going to have a timeout on the field called by Southern Connecticut. We'll take it with them. First down and 10 coming up for Southern Connecticut. 7-0 Bucknell. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. That's the commercial. For whatever it takes to make your car or truck look new again here at Dealer's Choice. Call for an appointment and let us do the details on your vehicle. Think of us as your vehicle cleaning headquarters. That's Dealer's Choice next to Deal Chevrolet Cadillac Geo on the strip, Route 15, Lewisburg. Applying for a loan at Northern Central Bank is easy and fast. Call or visit one of our many community offices, provide us with the loan application information, and give us 15 minutes. We'll process it, and upon credit approval, we'll provide you with a check in 15 minutes guaranteed. And if Northern Central doesn't meet the 15-minute guarantee, you'll receive a one-quarter percent discount off the current interest rate. If you want to consolidate credit cards, purchase a new appliance. Bucknell on top by the score of seven to nothing as the ball is out to the 30 yard line. It'll be second down and four after the six yard run by Robinson out of the backfield, 4-10 to go. Bob Beeler along with Brian Baldinger. We mentioned after the Fox to Moore seven yard touchdown pass that Bucknell has lost linebacker Wally Hurdley, so Michael Haggerty will be in that spot here a little bit later on today. Second down and four after the six yard run by Robinson. Robinson the lone back. Burns the quarterback, overlooking a five-man front. Bird cheats up from the linebacker spot. He will blitz. Burns hands off to Robinson, and Ed Berman will charge in there to make the first tackle. Rob Bird is also there, as is Brandon Little. And that time, it looked like a jailbreak on the defensive line that time. Southern Connecticut had their hands full and will now look at a third and nine. Well, I think they've really got a pretty good scouting report on what they're trying to do there. They, they blitz from the offside, but Berman with some tremendous speed coming around the corner was able to chase the back down from the backside. Berman last year with 11 sacks. Uh, leading the team in that category, also with a number of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And they're showing his effectiveness as well. It is now third down and nine coming up for Southern Connecticut. Backs are split, Rowe and Robinson. They have a three wide receiver set, no tight end. Everyone into the pattern. Burns being rushed, Burns being sacked. Three guys will jump on him. He'll lose yardage all the way back to the 15. Getting up from the bottom of the pile is defensive end Hunter Adams. Ed Berman also there. Rob Bird there, and he didn't have a chance to get that ball off. Hunter Adams jumped on him like he was a stray animal, but really the guy that made that play possible is Ed Berman with a lot of good inside penetration. It made uh, uh, Burns really freeze in the pocket, and then Hunter Adams was able to jump on him, and uh, Bucknell really uh, controlling things from the defensive side of the football. Fourth down and 20. Snap from center, kick low by Bianca Mano. It'll bounce at the Southern Connecticut 40. It'll take an owl roll out to midfield. It'll die right on the midfield stripe, and Bucknell once again, Brian, is gonna have a very short field to work with, at the 50-yard line, only 34 yards on the kick by Bianca Mano. It looked like he had a little trouble handling the ball, and that caused him to be slow getting the punt off. Well, he had a lot of pressure up the middle there, and he was probably lucky to get that ball off. Uh, Bucknell here, the second drive that they're starting at the 50-yard line or inside, of course, the touchdown drive was ignited by the interception. And you always like to be able to see you do that, capitalize on a turnover. They only had to go 61 yards on that drive. This time they only have to go 50. So Bucknell getting some breaks with their defense, once on a turnover and once on a stop. First and 10, Fox play fakes, looking to go long. Dumps it out in the right oh. flat, and it's intercepted by the middle linebacker, J.R. Ferguson. Both teams now have come up with an interception, and I think Fox would love to have a string on that ball and bring it back. Well, he sure would like to have that back. And like I said before the game started, what you want from Fox here is not to hurt the team right now. He's a young kid that's just trying to get some experience on the move, and that's the type of play that you don't really need to make. Lemon was running the ball very, very effectively. Uh, he had a good play-action pass right there, good play-action, and he had a nice pocket to uh, throw the ball. Just a really poor pass. First and 10 for Southern Connecticut. They get the football back. Far hash mark. So on the near side, they'll deploy Ortiz and Traverso. Row the fullback on a wing right side. So everything pretty much strong to the near side of the field. Robinson the lone back. Four-man front now for Bucknell. Burns will throw it out on the flat. Traverso makes the catch. The 43. A flag is down. Maybe a clip against Rowe as Rowe was sitting on top of Brandon Little, the outside linebacker. If the play stands, Southern Connecticut will be in the Bucknell territory at the 48, but the official will move back to the 46, and it appears a clip or a hold will be assessed against Southern Connecticut, so the Owls will lose yardage on the penalty, and they'll get first down again. Yeah, there's, there's no hiding from that. Uh, 
Scott Rowe knew exactly what he did right away. He was pounding the turf. He just caught the backside of the defender right there. And it's too bad it was a, it was a well-conceived play, and uh, the, the, the carrier had a little bit of room to run with right there. But uh, they're going to bring this one back. Brian, has the Offensive Linemen's Union in the NFL gotten rid of the uh, number on the penalty? Because that seems like the only time you guys ever got mentioned. Man, we were part of the Federal Witness Protection Program <laughs> if it wasn't for those penalties. Nobody knew who we were. I believe you were, what, number 61 last year? Is that right? Am I right? 62. 62. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that was close. That's a good sign that you didn't, you know, remember the number. <laughs> first and about 17 or 18 to go for a first down. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Bucknell enjoying a 7-0 lead over Southern Connecticut. Backs in an offset eye. Bucknell showing some blitz. They're going to send some linebackers. Hand off to Robinson. Trying to get around left end. And Ed Berman just too quick. Slowed him down. George Juanitz, the safety, will make the tackle. It'll be a loss of about four more on the play. But that time, we've seen Lemon on previous plays be able to get around the end containment. That time he couldn't do it as Berman got out there in a hurry. It's a heck of a, a chancy scheme right now that Tom Gadd is throwing at Southern Connecticut. Southern Connecticut unable to handle it. You would think that Burns, known that they're running strong side right into the extra man uh, up at the line of scrimmage there, might check off an audible to the other side. But as yet, I haven't seen him check off on any play. Lemon today with eight carries for 42 yards. His counterpart, Robinson, eight carries for only nine yards. Second down now and 21 to go for the Owls. Burns will toss it to Robinson again, trying to cut back on the right side. Now dances to the outside. He'll get a couple and then get completely picked up by the safety, George Hawanitz. Michael Haggerty stole the ball, but that was after the play. He was headed to the end zone. But Hawanitz basically got a takedown for Bucknell, just picked Robinson up and set him on his backside. That didn't feel too good. And right now, Ellis Robinson has very little room to run. He, he's having to avoid people in the backfield, which is not the intention of a good offense. And this is supposed to be an experienced offensive line, but they're not handling a lot of the movement that Bucknell is throwing at him up front right now, and it's creating a lot of problems uh, right at the line of scrimmage. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Again, Bucknell by seven. Third down and 21 to go for a first down. Burns on a straight drop, throws it long left side, and Ortiz cut inside, and the pass went outside. Awanitz and Jackson had coverage. Miller, the free safety, was also there. Bucknell was in their dime package that time, and it's incomplete, and they're going to get the football back on a hey, Bianca Mano punt. Bob, whether it's Bob Burns or whether it's Danny Marino, nobody can throw an effective pass when Hunter Adams is jumping in your face and uh, wiping him out right to the ground. Uh, there, there's no way he could have even seen the receiver on that particular play. Ten-man rush for Bucknell. Sikowski in single safety at his own 33. Bianca Mata will punt. It's a spiraling kick. Sikowski with a chance to return it. We'll go back to catch it on the 32. Juke the first man. Come to the near side. To the 45, excuse me, to the 35, to the 40. A return of seven for Sikowski before he's finally knocked off his feet with 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Time probably to run one play. Sikowski carrying a little dangerously like a loaf of bread out there, but uh, did a nice job eluding the first guy. Well, he did a nice job of eluding the, uh, the, the end man on the, on the punt team and uh, juked him and looked like he was on his own. The, the wall was set up to the right, but he saw something back to the left. Made a nice move to get five yards out of the return. 38-yard kick for Bianca Mano. Bucknell will start at first and 10 from their own 40. Good field position again. 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Fox looking over a four-man front for Southern Connecticut. Backs in an eye. Tossed to the short side. Lemon will cut back. He'll get across the 40 to the 42. And that should be the final play of the first quarter. On the stop for Southern Connecticut was defensive end Ray Lallier. With the score, Bucknell 7, Southern Connecticut nothing. Let's pause for the 60-second timeout. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Shop should be filled with master mechanic hand tools from Allen's True Value Hardware Store at the Milton Watson House. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to stick around at halftime. It's Bucknell Football and Pizza Hut present Tune Time. 14 first year resident calls will compete in a wacky five first race, and winners will receive. Bob Beeler and Brian Balding are back here on the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, and WWPA Williamsport. Bucknell looking at a second down and eight. We've switched ends beginning the second quarter with the Bison in front, 7 to nothing. Lemon, the lone back, he'll get the handoff, try to bounce to the outside, to the right side, 45-50, straight arms a man inside the 45 of Southern Connecticut, still on his feet, and gets wrestled out of bounds, finally by the free safety, Fran Bouvois. A lot of guys had a shot at him, Brian, but uh, not too many had a chance to bring him down. Well, the sign of a really good running back is a guy that will not be brought down by one guy. Nobody brought Lemon down there, and a lot of people had a crack at him. He just keeps his feet moving and he's, uh, he's deceptively strong as he's able to break through a lot of arm tackles. It is first and 10 Bucknell opening seconds of quarter number two. They have it now at the Southern Connecticut 40-yard line, so roughly about a 20-yard pickup that time for Rich Lemon. 
They'll break the huddle. Lemon, the lone back. No Puma and Sikowski go wide to the left. Stover, the tight end on the right side. Six-man line for Southern Connecticut. Fox looking at a blitz. They pick it up. Play fake to Lemon. Fox bootlegging to the right. Fox throwing it over the middle. Nope, who makes the catch inside the 30. He'll get to the 24-yard line. A pickup of 14. Going through traffic was Fox, and Nope, who made a nice catch. Yeah, Nope, who came from the other side across the, uh, across the defense. It's very difficult to cover that because you're running with the quarterback, and you don't know if he's going to throw short or long, so you've got to stay in your protective zones. But that's a good safe play for Burns right there. First of all, he's got bootleg action. He's kind of on the move. He's using his own athletic ability. It's just a matter of being able to throw accurately on the run, which some young guys have a difficult time doing. No boom to the left. Sikowski to the right. Lemon the lone back. The tight end is up on a wing. Fox will play fake. No, he'll hand it off to Lemon. Lemon follows a block, and he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. That time, one of the secondary men, or actually the linebacker, Terry Burrow, came up to make the stop. Loss of one coming up. It'll be second down now and 11 to go for a first down. Time of possession in the first half. Despite Bucknell leading 7-0, Southern Connecticut had the ball for almost three minutes more, uh, or a little over three minutes more, 9.06 to 5.54. And Brian will take a look at some of the other statistics after this next play. Second and 11 for the Bison, 13.54 and counting to go in the second quarter, 7-0 Bucknell, the Bison in Southern Connecticut territory again. The backs are split, Lemon and Bombich behind Fox. Fox on a straight drop, has some time. Fox steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, it's tipped, and a juggling catch by Cal Wilcox, the tight end, inside the 15 to the 13, a pickup of about 16 yards on the play, and off the ricochet, Wilcox does a great job of hanging on. Well, that's, a very, that's very difficult to concentrate after the ball is tipped and you're down on the ground to be able to catch that ball. It wasn't a bad pa pass by Fox. The ball just got tipped uh, somewhere in the middle there, in the middle of the secondary, but great catch by Wilcox. First and 10, Bucknell back inside the red zone at the Southern Connecticut 13-yard line. Backs in and I, Bombich, and now Milton Moore, the backup tailback. Moore will carry for the first time, and Moore will not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. Making the initial hit was defensive tackle Tim O'Hagan for Southern Connecticut. And you've got the first quarter stats, Brian. Well, the biggest stat, of course, was the turnover uh, that Bucknell was able to capitalize on. But uh, first downs, Bucknell had four, Southern Connecticut three. Uh, pass attempts for Fox, he was two for four for 13 yards. Burns was two for five for 23 yards. And uh, the big thing was uh, 12 carries for 52 yards for Bucknell, most of that at the hands of uh, Mr. Lemon. 12.47 to go in the half, second down and 11 after the one-yard loss for Moore. Fox back to pass, everybody in the pattern. Fox has the ball tipped at the line and nearly intercepted by Southern Connecticut at the 7. And again, we've talked about this a little bit earlier. For a guy that's 6'5", I think he's had about three passes now that have been tipped on the day. Well, I, I need to watch it a little more closely, Bob, but I, I think he really drops his arm down when he throws the ball, so it's not like he's throwing from a release of a guy 6'5", more like a guy maybe 6'1", and I think that's part of the problem. Also in that first quarter, Lemon did have nine carries for 44 yards, so he's on track for another 100-yard day right now. And, of course, he's trying to close in on the 1AA record of 20 consecutive held by Frank Hawkins of Nevada, Reno, back in 1979 and 1980. Third and 11, Bucknell looking to convert. Fox back to pass, steps up in the pocket, has room, doesn't run, and then forces it, and it's nearly intercepted by the safety, Tom Caporale, nearly caught by Mike Phillips on the ricochet, and as Fox is laying down at the 12-yard line and has not gotten up, a roughing the passer call will go against Southern Connecticut, and that is a foolish play for the Owls because Fox threw it really where he shouldn't have. He probably should have been following Jason Donkers because he had some room to run on that left side, but instead, the penalty is going to give Bucknell at least another down and maybe a first down as uh, we'll see if it's an automatic first down. It's roughing the passer against the Owls, and it is automatic first down, so it's first and goal. Fox is back up a little bit groggy, but he's going to stay in there at quarterback. It was a silly play on the defense right there. Uh, Fox, first of all, could have run that ball in for a touchdown. He had wide open field, and it did a nice job of escaping some defensive linemen at the line of scrimmage, but uh, decided to try and go for the pass, and uh, really it was an ill-advised throw. Bucknell with new life as they have a first and goal now at the seven. They're going to run with double tight ends and a wing back. Bombich in front of Lemon in the I formation. Defense stacked in against the line by Southern Connecticut. Fox will hand off to Lemon straight up the middle. He'll plunge his way to the five. We'll call it a gain of two. 12-25 to go in the half. 7-0 Bucknell. Scores of some other games in the second quarter. Florida State leads Clemson 7-0. Nebraska in front 17-7 over Michigan State. It's Michigan 7, Memphis nothing. And in the game played an hour to our west. Texas Tech in the second quarter leads Penn State 14-7 with six minutes to go. 
I'm a little surprised here in this drive that they've been running more and Lemon to the right side. They had an awful lot of success running left on their touchdown drive. And of course, left is the two seniors, Donkers and Gay. They'll run Lemon straight up the middle, maybe a little bit more to the left side of center, and they'll plow their way inside the five to about the four, but still, they're looking at a third down and goal from the four, probably a passing situation coming up here. They had a third and goal from the seven on their last touchdown drive, and they threw four. Yeah, generally you could tell if they bring in the extra tight ends that, you know, it's a run pass option. When they don't even bring the tight ends in, generally they're gonna throw the ball here. Well, they've got Stover in there as a tight end, as is Wilcox, and also the wingback uh, Rocket. They may be looking at this as four-down territory, that they're going to go for it on the fourth uh, on the four-yard line and then go for it again. Fox is going to toss to Lemon. Lemon couldn't get outside, now cuts back to the left, eludes a tackler, and oh. he'll be tripped up by J.R. Ferguson. We've called his name a lot. He'll lose a yard back to the five, and now the field goal unit will have to come on. Well, it was a great job by Ferguson to pursue that far, and it was some great nifty running by Lemon to even have the, uh, the thought of being able to get it in the end zone there. One more, one more tackle, and uh, he's able to walk into the end zone. I saw Fox down there trying to throw a little block downfield. His quarterback was helping him out. 22-yard kick from the left hash. Miller was working very hard the other day on his angle kicks. These are the ones he's had trouble with. And Miller puts it through the uprights on a 22-yard field goal. So the timing has paid off by Miller. Sikowski had a low pass from center and had to put it on the grass. We've got a break in the action. 10.40 to go in the second quarter. Bucknell extends the lead to 10-0. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. They're going to call it unsportsmanlike. Christmas has come early for Bucknell after the Miller 22-yard field goal to extend the lead to 10-0. Southern Connecticut has called for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and now Bucknell is going to get to kick off from the midfield stripe. When you add up the roughing the passer call that kept Bucknell's drive alive probably resulted in the same thing, a field goal, but now field position, Bucknell should be able to take advantage and bottle Southern Connecticut up by getting the kick off from the 50. This game is really very simple, Bob. It's a game of big plays. It's a game of turnovers. It's a game of field position. Right now, Bucknell's winning all three categories. No surprise that they have a 10-0 lead at this point. And Ross Coleman will tee it up in the center of the B at the 50-yard line. And we'll see if he'll try to get a touchback here and force Connecticut, Southern Connecticut to go the 80 yards, the long way for the score. Green far side, Poteet near side, and Coleman will kick it high, and it's going to be Poteet in two yards deep in the end zone. He'll bring it out across the five to the 10. Steve Noteboom, one of the wide receivers, the first man to get to him. He'll get out just across the 15 to about the 17. Decent return, but when you're two yards deep in the end zone, you better see the 20. An impressive part of the Bucknell team today has been the kickoff coverage team. That's their third kickoff. And I haven't seen Southern Connecticut do anything so far as far as a return. Rob Burns will come back out on the field at quarterback. Burns last season only completed 48% of his passes. And this afternoon, Burns on the day is just two out of five, so completing a little less than he normally does. Backs are split. Robinson along with Rowe. To the left side, it is Traverso. To the right side, Ortiz. Five-man front. Now Bucknell sends a couple of linebackers. Burns back to pass. Burns will throw it left side and throws it into the second row of Bucknell people standing on the sidelines. Incomplete. Second and ten coming up. That was a good uh, decision by Burns as all receivers were man-to-man -man covered and covered well, uh, although he did have plenty of protection right there. Second down and ten coming up from the 17-yard line of Southern Connecticut. Again, we mentioned a little earlier that Hurdley out with a torn ACL and Bucknell's women's soccer team now goes to 2-1. and one. They beat Lehigh this afternoon 3 to nothing. so they're 1-0 oh in the Patriot League. Second down and 10 again from the 17. Burns looking over a five-man front. Burns is going to hand it to Robinson over the right side. Robinson will get a couple. Pat Feely, the nose guard, right there to be the first man to greet him. Once again, Brian, we've talked about Bucknell's style of defense. We've seen a lot of defenders around the ball every time Mr. Robinson has touched it. Well, I've seen a lot of things. Uh, one of the, I just saw something new on that play. Willie Jackson was blitzing off the corner. He was on the back side. If there was any play that was coming to his side, which was the off side of that play, he would have been right in the backfield making that tackle. So he's really gambling out here quite a bit, and I think he's really cheating a lot of formations, which is something a good, uh, venerable defensive coach will do. 
9.50 to go in the second half, excuse me, in the second quarter. 10 to nothing, Bucknell. Third down and eight. Burns sets up a screen right side, making the catch is Ortiz, his first catch of the game. Comes back to the near side, being chased by five and blue, and they'll push him out of bounds at the 23, and Ortiz will be knocked out by Charles Crudup, and Ed Berman will not get the first down. He'll be knocked out about three or four yards shy. Great pursuit by the Bison. Ortiz took the little middle screen, but never could get around the corner. That's a play right out of the San Francisco 49er playbook. Jerry Rice runs that for about 70 yards generally. Uh, Ortiz does a nice job of avoiding a lot of tacklers. Unfortunately, they were just swarming bees out there and uh, knocked them all the way to the sideline. Southern Connecticut now just one out of five on third down conversions. Bianca Mano on to punt again. It'll be his fourth punt of the day. His longest thus far has been just 38 yards. Bucknell again will put 10 at the line. And it appears that Southern Connecticut may be calling another timeout. They will, and we'll take it with them. 60-second break, 9.42 to go in the half, 10-0 in favor of Bucknell. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Number one, Frank Biancomano back to punt for the Owl. They never hold it long enough for us. We don't have red hats. Ten nothing in favor of Bucknell over Southern Connecticut, and Bianca Mano gets his best punt of the day, chasing Sikowski back to his own 19. He'll return it 11 yards out to the 30. On the tackle for Southern Connecticut was Fran Bouvois, but on the punt, 56 yards that time for Bianca Mano, almost 20 yards longer than his previous best. Oh, that was an excellent punt, but one thing that I'm noticing here about Tom Gadd's team is that they're very aggressive on special teams, and one of the advantages of showing a blitz look on punt return is that the, uh, the opposing punt punting team can't really put wide receivers out to chase down the ball. They're forced to stay in and block, and those kind of guys don't like to block. And also, they don't get down the field for maybe they could have downed it. Instead, Sikowski's able to pick it up and come up with an 11-yard return. First and 10, Fox the quarterback, throws in the left flat. O.G. Perkins makes the catch at the 34, fights his way across the 35 to the 36. It'll be a pickup of six. And, Brian, you think maybe a face mask is called against the Owls? I, I think there was a face There's mask. There's a flag on. down. And we'll wait and see. The referee will come over and show us. And, Brian, you've got the Eagle Eye Award at least for the moment in the first half. The referee today is Edward Ardito, Edward Ferranti, the umpire, James Rowe, the headlinesman, the line judge, Thomas Wheatley, John Kennard, the back judge, the field judge, Jerome Seibertz, and that is your crew here this afternoon, an ECAC crew. 9.17 to go in the half, Bucknell by two scores. They lead it 10-0. They scored on a touchdown pass from Fox to Moore and a 22-yard uh, field goal just a few seconds ago on their last drive to make it 10-0. First and 10, Bucknell after the catch and the face mask. They have it at their own 41. Bombich and Lemon in an eye. Six-man front for Southern Connecticut. Fox, the quarterback, calling out the signals. Hands it off to Lemon, straight up the middle. Breaks to the left side a little bit. Rumbles across the 45 to about the 47. Once again, we call the name of middle linebacker J.R. Ferguson. But Lemon on first down picks up the better part of five yards, and it's second and five coming up. I think we need to give credit here. It's about time to uh, Domenicus and, and Donkers inside is they really got a lot of push right up the middle. And once Lemon gets that kind of a softness in the defense, he's got the speed and the moves and the instincts to do you know, some good damage. But that a six yard gain, but it was really created by the guys inside on that play. Second down and four, they gave Lemon six. Fox on a little sprint draw to Lemon. Lemon picks his way across the 50, very close to a first down. Ferguson again on the tackle for Southern Connecticut. Also getting up from the bottom of the pile for the Owls was one of their uh, defensive players, that being, uh, I believe it was Ty Wilson or possibly uh, Ken Steiner in there. But uh, Lemon once again picks up four or five yards and the sticks will move. He'll come out and get a breather right now and it appears Milton Moore will come in to spell him at the tailback spot. Eight minutes, eight seconds to go in the half. 10-0 Bucknell. Phillips to the left side, Sikowski to the right. Backs Moore and Bombich split. Stover the tight end on the left side. Southern Connecticut jumping around a little bit on the defense. They move some of their defensive backs up. Fox will go back to pass. Throw it quickly right side. Sikowski makes the catch the 38. Inside the Southern Connecticut 35. He's bumped out of bounds by Dwight Clark at the 32. Another big gainer for the Bison offense. And Sikowski, who has been a model of consistency, caught passes in 9 of 11 games this year, brings in his first one of this game. I'm starting to note a... a, a, a growing air of confidence with Jim Fox here 
on this particular drive. That's the second really well-thrown ball to the outside. That one to Sikowski. Nice job by Sikowski staying in bounds. 18-yard pickup on the play. Fox goes back to the run. Milton Moore, the backup tailback, will get maybe a yard or two close to the 30-yard line, yanking him down. Linebacker Mike Teaves for Southern Connecticut. Second and eight coming up as they do move the ball to the nose of the 30-yard line. 10-0 Bucknell as we're down under seven and a half minutes to go in the half. I can't really tell, Bob, if something happened to Rich Lemon. He's sitting down on the sidelines right now, and I don't know if, uh, if he got the wind knocked out of him and he's just resting now or something, but... He didn't look good coming off the field uh, a couple plays ago. Backs are split. Fox under center. Sikowski to the left. Phillips to the right. Second down and eight from the 30 of Southern Connecticut. Fox on a straight drop. Fox steps up in the pocket. Had the ball tipped again at the line the fourth time today, and he got knocked down again. Tim O'Hagan, a man to get to him for Southern Connecticut to put the pressure on. Yeah, that's tough. He did a nice job staying in the pocket and waiting uh, to the last possible second to release that ball, but the same time he got released, he got hit. And that's what uh, knocked that ball off target. I think Lemon is just tired, Bob. And uh, he's carried the ball quite a bit here so far in the first half. He's got, is it 14 carries? 16, 16 carries for 77 carries. yards. So. It's, a, it's a full day for most running backs, and he's done it in a quarter and a half. Ricky Waters would have loved to have those statistics <laughs> last week. Third down and eight for the Bison. Fox on a straight drop. Throws it over the middle, making the catch is Noteboom. Breaks a tackle at the 20. Carries a man inside the 15 to the 13. Gain of 17. Noteboom with his second catch of the day, and both of them have been in traffic. Well, like I said a couple of plays ago, Fox is really uh, – getting a lot of confidence right now. He's throwing a ball with a lot of authority. He's putting something on it, and he's finding a receiver early, and he's getting it into the seams there, and that was just a well-thrown ball. Good play. The West Coast offense talks about diversifying their receivers. Six different guys have caught balls for Bucknell, and Bucknell now also three out of four today on third down conversions compared to one of five for the Owls. First and 10 now at the 14 of Southern Connecticut. Double tight ends, rocket in motion. It's a toss to Moore. The short side inside the 15, close to the 11. It'll be a pickup of three. Ferguson again on the tackle for the Owls. One of the components of the West Coast offense, Bob, is that they want to get the ball and the receiver on the move so that they can do something with the ball after the catch. And that's what you've seen Sikowski do and Noteboom do here in this drive. Bucknell now with a second down and about eight to go as they move the ball back to the 12. They didn't give him as much progress as we expected. Steve Pratico, a sophomore, transfer from Rutgers, played linebacker for them, playing fullback for Bucknell, is into the game right now. He's in front of Moore in the eye. Again, they go with double tight ends inside the 15 and a wing back. Fox will play fake to Moore. Back to pass. Fox being chased from the backside. Fox floats it in the end zone for the tight end. Grimm, who makes the catch for the score? A 12-yard pass from Fox to Grimm, and boy, was that a picture-perfect floated pass to the backup tight end. Well, it started with the play-action fake. He really did a nice job of hiding the ball, something a lot of NFL quarterbacks aren't even capable of doing that well. And then he did a nice job of just floating the ball over about four defenders with a real nice touch on the ball. And like I've been saying this entire drive, it just looks like a new confident guy out there right now. Of course, he hasn't played a whole lot. He only attempted three passes, and that was not last year, but the year before. And on for the extra point is Miller to try to extend Bucknell's lead to 17 to nothing, and does. Got another break in the action. 5.52 to go in the first half. It is all Bucknell. The Bison 17, the Owls nothing. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Everybody at Aubrey Alexander Toyota. 17. Bob Beeler and Brian Baldinger back here as Bucknell extends the lead to 17 to nothing with 5.52 to go in the quarter. Coleman will kick off, taken on the five by Green. Flag is down, probably an illegal block against Southern Connecticut. He did return it out to the 28, so we'll call it a 23-yard return. In addition to 17-0 here, taking a look at some other Patriot League scores, Army leads Lehigh 14-0. That's early in the first. Buffalo leads Lafayette 3-0. That game played in Buffalo. And Texas Tech continues to lead Penn State at the half. It's the Red Raiders 20 and the Nittany Lions 7. And the penalty is against Southern Connecticut. It'll move the ball back inside the 20 to the 16, and that's where the Owls will start it. Another long drive for Bucknell, Brian. Seven plays, 70 yards, a little over three and a half minutes, and uh, Bucknell has done a nice that job last of taking... Drive, oh, yeah, they took control and really uh, asserting themselves right now, but that last drive was a nice mix of passing and running more. Uh, as a changeup right there. Penalties have really hurt Southern Connecticut. Six penalties today for 60 yards, just one penalty for Bucknell. 
The Owls will open on their own 16. Burns under center. Five-man front for Bucknell. Handoff. No, it's a play fake to Robinson. Nobody's getting faked, and Berman will get an easy sack back at the four. A loss of 13 on the play. I bit the fake, but I don't count. Berman didn't bite it, and he gets a very easy sack. I believe it's his second of the game. Well, there's a lot of things going wrong for Southern Connecticut right now. The worst thing of all is the penalties. The coaches can live with uh, lack of execution. They can live with being out physical. They can live with a guy like Berman having a great day out there today. They, they, there's no excuse for the penalties, and that's what's really hurt them. Five minutes and 15 seconds to go in the half. 17 to nothing in favor of Bucknell. Fox with two touchdown passes, one to Moore and one to Grimm, and a 22-yard field goal by Miller, and Bucknell has dominated this first half of the football game. Southern Connecticut back on their own five. They have a second down and 22 to go for a first down, and now the Owls will spend their final timeout of the quarter. And it's Corning who provides catalytic converters for your car, optical fiber for your voice, video and data communications, and cookware for your home. And Corning is an enthusiastic supporter of Bucknell students, faculty, and staff who are committed to excellence both on and off the football field. Corning Incorporated is a diversified products and services company with a strong commitment to technological excellence and innovation. And our thanks to Corning for not only helping us with our radio broadcast, but being our sponsor of our weekly television show. And Brian, everything going right for Bucknell in this first half. Tom Gadd has to be very pleased with the way his team is debuting. Well, they're executing very well. They're not beating themselves with mistakes. They had the one, the one uh, interception that they'd like to have back. But other than that, it's been the only glitch in this performance so far today. Southern Connecticut hasn't really, uh, like we talked about early in the game, hasn't really asserted himself offensively. Bucknell, with a lot of speed and a lot of quickness and some really well-designed defensive fronts, seems like they've confused Southern Connecticut so far. What do you think the teams are going to have to do as this game plays out? Can Southern Connecticut make any kind of adjustments to uh, try to get their offense on track? Well, you know, their, their big key guy is Robinson, and he hasn't been able to do much so far, and they've really contained him. I think that was the game plan, contain Robinson and make them throw the football. Robinson today, 10 carries for just 11 yards. Second down and 22. Burns will pass out of his own end zone. Going long for Ortiz. He's got a step on Parham. And no flag called. Parham was jostling with him. Ortiz wants a holding call at the 45-yard line. And I think Mr. Ortiz may have a case. It was a well-thrown ball by Fox. And Ortiz nearly caught it despite being bumped by Parham. Well, we talked about the big three offensive weapons for Southern Connecticut before the game. Ortiz, uh, Burns, and Robinson. And you asked me how they can get back in the game. Well, they just showed you. They went for it all on that play. Ortiz had two steps on the defender. The ball was a little underthrown. I thought there was some interference on the play, Bob. I would agree. Those three guys have combined for 44 yards for Southern Connecticut today. And I don't think Southern Connecticut has much more than that on the day total. 4.49 to go in the half. Burns on third and a mile. will hand off to Robinson. Just trying to get him some room to punt. Willie Hill will make the tackle out at about the 11 or 12 yard line. And now we'll see if Tom Gadd's squad decides to go for the whole ball of wax and maybe try to go for a punt block in the end zone or whether they play for the return. Well, Tom's got to be pleased with the defensive performance thus far. Nobody has had to single tackle anybody so far. Every time a ball carrier for the Owls runs, at least two guys are hitting him simultaneous. The end of the game, Brian Baldinger will be down on the field to talk with Tom Gadd and some of the stars of today's game. And so far, there have been quite a few. Bianca Mano back in his own end zone to punt. Rush comes. They do go for the block. They knock Bianca Mano down, but no foul called. Sikowski will take the ball at the 45, come to the near side, the 40, the 35. He'll be run out of bounds at the 32, a return of about 13 for Sikowski, 34 yards on the punt. Bucknell went for some pressure, and uh, Bianca Mano had a very short kick, and once again, Bucknell starting an excellent field position at the 32-yard line of the Owls. Well, Bucknell certainly seems like they have the home field advantage today when it's coming to the officials. <laughs> it looked like there might have been rough in the punter there, and it looked like there might have been a clip, but if it isn't called, it hasn't been done. Rick Hartzell in a staff meeting, and I'll share this story with you after this play about officials. Rick, an ACC basketball referee, may know what he's talking about. First and ten, the uh, situation for Bucknell. Twin set to the left side. Fox will hand it off to Lemon on a sprint draw, and Lemon will be knocked down by Teves after a gain of four. He was reminding coaches, because it's a coach's responsibility in all sports, to make sure that the checks are there for the officials. And he says if you give it to them before the game, they know they're getting paid, and sometimes they're a little friendlier to you than when you say, hey, the check's in the mail. <laughs> well, I think we all agree with that. 
Three forty to go. Your checks in the mail here today, Brian. So uh, <laughs> I'll see you at halftime. <laughs> second down and six coming up after the four yard gain by Lemon. Sikowski wide to the left. Noteboom wide to the right as Bucknell tries to tack on another score. Noteboom in motion from right to left to give him a twin set over there. Backs in an eye. Lemon will carry after taking a breather on the last drive, and Lemon comes out of the hole and tries to go back to the left side where Terry Barrow, the linebacker, is waiting for him. It'll leave Bucknell with a third and four coming up. 3-10 to go in the first half. I think the thing that's impressed me about Rich Lemon so far today, like all great running backs, his best asset is his vision. Uh, you know, that play was designed to go uh, over the right guard, right tackle, and uh, there was nothing there. He was able to bounce it over to the left side, almost made something big happen there, but just the fact that he saw an opening to the left and was able to, He's got the ability and the cutting ability to get over there. Third down now and about four for Bucknell. Four wide receivers in the game. Lemon the lone back, no tight ends. Fox back to pass. Throws it long left side. Phillips is out there and overthrows him at the three. A flag is down back at the 30-yard line. Bucknell is going to be called for a hold. We'll see if Southern Connecticut will want to take a fourth down and count the play and three from the 26-yard line. It'd be about a 42 or three-yard field goal or whether they give Bucknell a chance at a third and long again. But one of the advantages of the West Coast offense for a quarterback and the offense in general is that they really sp work on specific areas of the field. You don't have to read the entire defense's coverage. And on that particular play, they flooded the left side with four different receivers. You can't cover all four. And, you know, they had a wide open receiver there. I'm sure that uh, Fox would like to have that ball back. That should have been seven points. I want to remind you, you're listening to the Bison Sports Network. It's WTGC in Lewisburg and WWPA in Williamsport. 2.42 to go in the half. Southern Connecticut will march Bucknell back to the 40-yard line and give them another chance at third and 17. I don't know. I like to bring up fourth down and a long field goal try, but we'll see whether the Owls have the decision pay off. Fox on his second chance, back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, still looking. Throws downfield, and it's intercepted by Dwight Clark at the 25. Clark to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, and it appears to be a very good decision for the Owls. He returns it out across the 40 to the 42. Second interception of the day thrown by Fox and the Owls now will have 229 to work in the second half, excuse me, in the second quarter, and they have it at their own 41, one of their better field positions of the day. Well, that's just an example that we talked about in his last interception. Just trying to do too much with it, Bob. Um, they're up 17 to nothing. They're in they're not in great shape to actually make that first down right there. Don't do anything silly. You know, at least turn it over to the punt team, give it to their defense, let them take it from there. So it's first and 10 for the Owls at the 41, their own. Bucknell in a five-man front. Burns on a quick count, back to pass, and maybe somebody moved before the start because they're blowing this play dead and not allowing Burns to throw the ball in the flat to row. Again, if you're just joining us, 17 to nothing in favor of Bucknell. The Bison have looked very good in Tom Gad's debut, and it is illegal procedure, the call against the Southern Connecticut offense, so they'll have a first down play again, and it'll move back to the 36 of Southern Connecticut. Next week on the road, 12.30 start as Bucknell is at Fordham. It'll be the first Patriot League game of the season. Bucknell and Fordham closed the season last year with Bucknell winning in exciting fashion, 29-26 to in the final minutes of the game. Bucknell will try to win over in the Bronx again this season. First and 15 now for the Owls. One back, that's Robinson, three wide receivers. Big rush comes. Burns has time, throws it over the middle, and making the juggling catch is the tight end, Jim Duhame. It'll be a pickup of 16, good enough for a first down, and the Owls will work without a huddle. I think Duhame was the most surprised guy on the <laughs> field right there. Look what I found. I don't think he thought he had a chance for that ball. It looked like he threaded it through about three defender hands, but uh, turned out to be a good catch. Duhame, not a real strong receiver, is a returning starter. Only caught seven passes a year ago, more of a blocker but catches that one. It's a big first down, and the Owls are now in Bucknell territory at the Bison 49. Again, three receivers. Robinson alone back. Burns back to pass. Being rushed, Burns throws it over the middle, intending it for the fullback row, and the ball knocked away by the linebacker, Rob Bird, who gets a pass deflection on that one. Second down and 10 coming up for the Owls. The clock stops with a minute 59 to go in the second quarter. Again, a 17-point lead for the Bison, and they're pitching a shutout, and I don't think Bucknell has had a shutout since 1984, in the nine years, this is my 10th year, I've never seen the Bison defense come up with a shutout, Brian. Well, maybe this is a, a sign of good things to come for this year. Second down and 10 at the 49 of Bucknell. 
Rin over the ball at center for the Owls. Back split now. Three wide receivers for Southern Connecticut. Four-man rush. Burns back to pass. It's a middle screen, and big Hunter Adams knocks it down, and it's 6'5", 250. He had a lot of reach and was able to just shot block it, kind of like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hunter Adams really came on in spring, uh, spring ball this year is having a very good day. I noticed that they've really kind of changed the emphasis on defense right now. They're at a four-man line right now trying to apply a lot more pressure since they know Southern Connecticut basically has to throw the football. So they're coming at him with four down linemen, and they're dropping the linebackers off quite a bit. Third down and 10 now for the Owls from the Bucknell 49. Ortiz to the right, Plummer to the left side, backs are split, and Burns under center. Four-man front for Bucknell. Burns back to pass, throws it out on the flat to row. He had a turn to catch it in the backfield. Gets away from the initial tackler, Jack Boyle. But Boyle is helped out by the free safety, Mark Miller, who finishes him off for a three-yard loss. Rowe really got hurt by the fact that he had to turn and wait for the ball and couldn't get his shoulder square to the line. Well, he was able to beat the one defender, but like we've uh, been uh, alluding to all day, the pursuit of Bucknell's defense has been tremendous. Nobody gets away very long without a swarming bunch of guys coming to meet him. Fourth down and 12, Bucknell's defense is going to spend the time out with a minute 39 to go to maybe try to get themselves into a two-minute offense and see what Jim Fox can do with it. Well, they've been real close today on uh, their punt pressure, getting close to the punter. I wouldn't be surprised if they go after this one very aggressively here and, and try to get a block or a, uh, a shanked punt right here and get some field position to work with. Uh, a big momentum builder for all offenses is to score before the first half ends and go into that locker room with that that feeling that you just came off of score and you want to continue it into the third quarter and the second half. Sikowski will go back to return it. He'll stand somewhere near his 10-yard line. Bianca Mano is punting for the sixth time in the half. He had a big 58-yarder last time. He had a lot of room to work with and has a pretty good amount of room to work with as the snap will come from just short of the midfield stripe. Bucknell with a 10-man line. We'll see if they go for the rush here. Derek Gregory, the snapper for Southern Connecticut. Nice pass from center. Not much rush, and it's a pretty good kick by Bianca Mano. Sikowski will let it go over his head at the 7, and it'll roll inside the 5 to the 2, and it'll be down there with less than a minute and a half to go in the period. Sikowski followed the textbook rule, puts your heels on the 10, and if it's over your head, don't touch it. That's just uh, good fundamentals right there. Uh, that ball was returnable. It was a low trajectory. I think he had a lot of room to run, but that is the rule. You stand on the 10-yard line. If the ball's over your head, you let it bounce. You hope it goes in the end zone. You get a touchback. And it's a 49-yard kick for Bianca Mano. No return. And Bucknell now in Be Careful Country at their own two-yard line. And right now, is here's where you're looking at getting just a first down. Run the clock out at the end of the half with a minute 28. Southern Connecticut is out of timeout, so they can't do anything to stop it. So Bucknell probably can just uh, maybe quarterback sneak it here with Big Jim Fox. They're going to hand off, carrying the ball, I believe, will be the fullback yeah. Bombich, and uh, he'll get a couple of yards out to about the four. Yeah, just don't want to do anything stupid in this territory here. Don't give, uh, they've played an excellent first half. Don't give Southern Connecticut anything at this point or anything that they could build momentum or they let them back in the game at this point. Minute 10 to go with a 25-second play clock that just got started. They can run it down to about 45, maybe 35 seconds. So uh, one of the differences between pro and college, you kind of have to put it back into play sooner if they spot the ball, but it's later if there's a long pass downfield. We'll explain that in a moment. Second down and six after the four-yard run by Bombich. Backs are in an eye. Long count by Fox. He'll snap it with four on the play clock. He'll hand it off to uh, Lemon, and Lemon will get to about the eight, where it'll bring up a third down and four. I'm sure Southern Connecticut would like to have a couple of those timeouts that they had to use to set their offense straight right now because if they were able to hold them in three downs, they they could possibly get the ball back for a couple of plays. Well, if Bucknell can just plunge it into the line, they're not going to have to punt the football. They've got 19 on the play clock, 25 on the game clock. This is third down. They run it. By the time they set it, the 25 seconds won't expire, and Bucknell will do a nice job of killing out the first half. I think Coach Gad's all over this situation right here. I think his clock management is probably pretty good, and I think that's what you're looking to do here. Third down and four. Fox will hand off to Bombich. Bombich will get out across the 10 to the 11. Time of possession in this quarter, Brian, it was... 9-6 to six roughly in the first quarter is going to be 11-4 to four in favor of Bucknell in the second well, quarter. Well, they had the long drives, you know, that, were, that ended up in scores. That's the best thing about it is they were able to control the football, keep it away from Southern Connecticut, which does have some talent on offense and is capable of exploding. They were able to keep the ball away from them and do some really 